sizes. It's heaven. It's heaven in a glass. Hey beer lovers, Nitch here, bringing you a wrap up of the world beer news every Thursday. Today is June 16th. Remember uh, last week how we talked about Claudia Schaefer, how she bathes in uh, beer every week? Here's a video about the brewery, they just released it. Uh, not only does Adnams distribute their beer and spirits around the world, but they want everyone to know that they care about the community that they work with and the environment they work in. Beach cleanup, bees, and self-temperature regulating storage facilities. Claudia Schaefer, good lord, even her bath water is eco-friendly. Also last week, we talked about beer run season with a killer 30 second video that you should definitely go check out. I bet you didn't know though you could turn your beer run addiction into a six figure a year income. <laughs> At least some people can. Uh, beer mile champion and world beer record holder Lewis Kent landed a deal last week with the National Beer Mile Race Series. It'll take him around the world and make all of us really jealous. Something to work towards. Or you could just stay at home and uh, build something freaking amazing from all your bottles. This Bangladeshi air cooler, reportedly the world's first ever zero electricity air conditioner. Its inventor wanted the world to know how it works. So here's a video on the whole deal. Eco coolers efficiency uh, apparently varies depending on conditions, but it has the ability to reduce indoor temperatures as much as five degrees Celsius, which is on par with the electricity that you can have uh, installed in like a central air cooling system. Fucking snazzy. So resourceful. I drink out of stemware. I prefer it. This looks nicer in this kind of a glass. But if you're still fussing around with those big man-handed pint glasses, maybe you'll like this. Cobra, a Molson Coors brand in yet another show of excessive financial waste, uh, claims that it has developed the world's perfect beer glass, the Cobra Smooth Pour Glass, the biggest breakthrough in pouring since gravity. Mm. People building air conditioning units out of plastic bottles, Coors pays Brigham University and the Imperial College to make high-tech glassware. Oh, excess. And if that's not pretentious enough for you, you could top off your perfect beer with a perfect beer foamer device. Essentially, it's a milk frother, but you pay $55 for it so you can impress your friends with cocktail quality beer foam and then watch them just stare at you blankly. Refills anyone? Mm-hmm, says the audience. Mm. You could always take your love of beer in the other direction with the Loda lids. It's a clever way to discreetly enjoy your favorite canned beverage. Uh, the lids snap on top of almost any regular size can, uh, and then you just put your favorite, like, coffee cup on the bottom. No one knows. No one knows you're drunk. It's fine. Uh, presentation is important, though, but I do think that branding is arguably more important or at least more argued about. Special Ed's Brewing, Z, Special Ed's Brewing, Tard Tested, Tard Approved. <laughs> Shit. Oh, jeez. Uh, they released uh, Ride the Short Bus to Special Beer and Back of the Bus Brown Ale, um, and then got a lot of complaints. So their Facebook is currently shut down for cleanup. Um, Sounds like the brewer kind of feels shitty about it, so don't bitch it to me anymore, but honest mistakes, right? So there's crossing the line, and then here's dancing with it! Chicago-based Spiteful Brewing is the latest craft brewer to find inspiration in none other than Donald Trump. Spiteful, known for their creative artwork, uh, announced the release of Key Lime Double IPA named Dumb Donald in a tweet on Monday, featuring a hunched over part man, part monkey uh, figure with a striking resemblance to the presumptive GOP presidential nominee. Dumb Donald is well dumb. So dumb, in fact, we named a beer after him. You don't even need things to make sense when you're just making fun of Donald Trump. It's the way to go. 
from the brewery that brought you Tom Green Beer. Bose All Natural Brewing uh, was named the official beer partner of Ottawa 2017, a year-long celebration of Canada's 150th birthday, taking place next year in the capital. Hmm. Other birthdays this week, Charlie Bamforth and Ray Daniels. Happy birthday to both of you. Charlie Bamforth is uh, the Anheuser-Busch Endowed Professor of Brewing Science at UC Davis. He's turning 64. He has two books out that are absolute must-reads. If you haven't, then you're not a beer geek. Uh, beer is proof that God loves us and grape versus grain. They're awesome. He's also just really funny. And Ray Daniels is the former director of craft beer marketing for the Brewers Association. He turns 58 and today he runs the Cicerone program. He's also the founder of that and um, he just knows everything there is to know about beer. The Cicerone program, if you don't know, is kind of like the sommelier for the wine industry. While we're dishing out high fives, let's Cheers the finalist in the first annual Scottish Beer Awards. For Brewery of the Year, we have Black Isle Brewing, Brewdog, Edinburgh Beer Factory, Fallen, Tempest Brewing Co. Good luck to each and every one of you. Yeah. As Stone Brewing expands globally and continues its crusade for true craft, Mitch Steele, after a decade Brewing for Stone announced that he'll be leaving the position of brewmaster at the end of the month. So far, we have a heartfelt video posted on the Stone YouTube channel with Steele stating that he got a once-in-a-lifetime offer and that he is sure the team of brewers he is leaving behind will be able to keep things running smoothly. Although not the best timing, the split seems amicable. Mm. We'll continue to follow up on the story as it develops. Maybe they should hire one of this year's homebrew con winners. Hmm? Nick Corona of San, San Marcos, California uh, won the Homebrewer of the Year award with his Weiss beard. No women in this one. Not this year. Huh. Uh, a complete list of the 2016 National Homebrew Competition winners can be found in the links below. I link everything down there. And while you're following up, go ahead and leave me a comment if you have any feedback or suggestions. And make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Yuckety yuck. Ugh. Here in Europe, it's sports season. It's a shit show out there. And with that comes excessive beer consumption. So uh, Manchester, there's a bar there that they are offering uh, free beer for fans of Stone Rose. I don't know. But if you sing a song, you get a free beer. So that's cool. And uh, McDonald's is actually doing a giveaway for a free six pack of beer. Oh, it's only in Austria, though. Bummer. And you have to get the McDonald's delivered to you and spend more than 20 euros. It's a lot of McDonald's. It's a, McDonald's can cater your party and you'll get a free six-pack. In the first collaboration of its kind, Thorn Street Brewery has teamed up with Jetty Extracts, a leader in cannabis industry, to bring craft beer drinkers something completely new. Not really, we've been doing it a while, but this one sounds like it actually is good. OG High PA Session IPA. It's an oxymoron, I know, but these people are high. So it's a 420, right? 4 per... 0.20 ABV. I mean, they put some thought into this. It's said to be juicy, dank, and delicious. The process of creating the beer is rooted in the science of turpins, which is a great thing to know about. Um, again, links. Um, there are compounds that are found both in cannabis and beer hops, and they give that unique, you know, dank smell. Although there's no THC in the beer, uh -uh, uh, the extract gives a distinct nose that is highly recognizable as fucking pot. So that's nice. Or grass and pine flavors, however you want to say it. OG High PA is already receiving a lot of attention either by selling out in bars within hours of tapping the keg or through the national media, uh, through like uh, Craft Brew News and Cannabis Now magazine. It's um, going to be available every year in the spring and summer. And uh, you can find it at the tasting room at Thornbid through. Mm -mm. <laughs> you can find it wherever. It's, if you find it, let me know. Selfish. Other releases this week, we have the Stone Citrusy Wit and Mocha IPA. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Woodmere Brothers has their Hep Shandy. It's returning for a second summer. Yay. Alpine Lily Vanilli six pack going nationwide by popular demand. There's something wrong with you people. 
Celebrating, <laughs> celebrating Japanese Immigration Month, Brazil's National Brewery and Japa's Brewery collaborate to release two special beers for the summer, a 5% Jasmine Bohemian Pilsner and an 8.2% Imperial Rice Porter. Oh, the launch of Black Anthrax. Ugh, I mean, that's a beer. 16% ABV Caracoa. I want it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. If you grew up in Washington State, then you've likely seen this Girl, commercial. Let's go! Come the end of the week, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and North California residents will be able to pick up the first addition to the Rainier family in nearly 20 years. Rainier Pale Mountain Ale. It's not a beer style exactly, but uh, being produced by Paps Brewing, it's all about the marketing anyway. Uh, it's a pale ale-like, reddish, copper-hued, pleasant but not memorable brew, and it'll be available on draft and in 16-ounce bottles, because, you know, 12-ounce. It's too cool for that. Mm-hmm. That's about it from last week, so impress your friends with your global beer knowledge. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, drop me an email at nichetastingniche.com. Follow me on all your favorite social channels. Merci et bien. Oh, wait. Ha! This little black bear helped himself to some golf player's beer in Alaska. <laughs> oh, global warming or whatever it is. Nature. Stealing people's beer. Oh, cute. Au revoir. Merci.